good evening and welcome. Uh, my name is Lynn McLean. I'm president-elect for um, FWIC, WI Canada. Certainly my pleasure to welcome you all here tonight to, to attend our social media workshop and intro. I'm just going to let people in here. Um, Tonight, um, we, we have an interactive presentation. We have um, two presenters, Monica Rivers and Donna McDonald, who both hail from Northeastern Nova Scotia. Uh, Donna is a dairy farmer and she has their farm, I'm gonna let more people in here. Um, they have their farm is Century Mac, Mac and uh, she does a lot of postings on social media and has 47,000 followers on TikTok with her farm. So mm -hmm. I think she might know a little bit about social media. And with her tonight is Monica Rivers. Uh, Monica is probably in still in her first year of a member. Donna has been a member for about three years. Monica has been a member for about one year. Monica it works with Ignite, which is the Atlantic Canada's Rural Innovation Hub. And that's a place for entrepreneurs to access technology, education, to develop new ideas, solutions for their business. So the gals are going to do the presentation and uh, we would ask you to mute yourselves. And uh, if you have a question, you can either put it in the chat or if we can see your hands because we're gonna, we do have a, a we're, we are going to put a PowerPoint presentation up, so we won't get to see all your lovely faces for a few minutes. So anyway, so welcome to Monica and Donna. Thank you. So I'm going to hopefully get this up here. So can you see, can you see the presentation? They're all nodding. They're all nodding. Okay. okay that is a, yes. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna take that as a as a positive thing. Um, so thank you, Lynn, for the wonderful introduction. Um, and as Lynn has mentioned, if you do have any questions, you can either put it in the chat. And I know Lynn will hopefully be watching that because I cannot see it. Um, but we do encourage people to ask questions throughout the presentation. And I would like to just note that I am not an expert <laughs> on social media, um, but the goal of this session this evening is just to get people thinking about how social media might be used to engage new members with WI. And like I say, if any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask us. So, the outline for this evening, we'll be going over social media platforms, then we'll be moving on to Facebook page versus Facebook group. So what is that? So we'll be highlighting that and then going over how to create an account, the difference between stories and news feeds, some teasers, some examples, some next steps and some questions. So hopefully it's a, a fun evening <laughs> of information. So the first, why is social media important? So this is kind of one of those big questions because social media is an important part of our lives. Many people use it to communicate with friends and family learn about what is happening in their community and to share what is important to them. So when looking at some, st some statistics, um, you have, so for social media usage for baby boomers, 56 and over, it is 40% essential a part of their lives for generation X between 41 to 56, it is a 74% essential part of their lives. And then for millennials, 25 to 40, it is a 72% essential part of their lives. So when looking at that, it is a 34% increase between baby boomers and Generation X that say social media is an essential part of their lives. So why use social media? 
So that again is a really great question. <laughs> so I kind of dug down into why might people use it and what are kind of those core basis around it. So we have sharing your story. So that is really important because it allows the community around you to feel like they are a part of what you are doing and it makes them aware of what your organization does. So we know that for many people in the previous slide, social media is an essential part of their lives. So why not use social media to reach your target audience to attract new members? especially once they know what your story is and you're sharing that with them. And then when you, so you can then stay connected with people as well. So you can like and follow other pages on social media and accounts. So it allows you to stay connected with other groups, organizations, and to see what they are doing. So people can tag, share, and interact with posts. And then that encourages more people to get involved. So there are many social media platforms and I just put some for example. So there's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, and there's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> um, but tonight we're gonna to be mainly focusing on Facebook and Instagram. So when an organization is choosing a social media platform to use, it is important to determine who your target audience is and what platform your target audience is on. So it's also important to think about how you share your information with them. So for example, if an organization mainly posts images to engage their audience, then they may consider using Instagram as opposed to Facebook. Or if somebody is wanting to get more information across to people, then you might use Facebook where your description is more visible than the actual image. So over, so I guess why are we only looking at Facebook and Instagram? So over 72% of Facebook users also use YouTube, WhatsApp, and Instagram. So that's kind of a main driver to make sure that if you do choose to use Facebook, you're also select, selecting another platform that people would likely be on. So a Facebook page versus a Facebook group. So when you look at Facebook, there's different types of groups or pages that you can have. So Facebook pages are designed more for businesses and organizations and brands to promote their product or services. So they offer businesses and organizations a way to reach out to a large audience build their brand and then drive traffic to their website through that whereas a facebook group they're designed for people with common interests to connect with each other so they offer members a way to interact with one another share information and updates and to stay up to date on the latest news on whatever it is that everybody is kind of interested in. So groups can be private or public, but if it is private, you can't share that with other people. So if you had a really exciting event and you posted it to a private group, only the people in the group are able to see that. And when you have a Facebook page, you are sending a message with one voice because it's not different people posting. It's just one page where in a Facebook group, I would post, Donna would post, Lynn would post, Eleanor would post, and it would just be your personal account that's sharing it. 
So then we have how to create a Facebook page. So I'll kind of walk everybody through this. I will, I think, uh, Lynn, will you be sharing the PDF presentation with everybody after? That way they can kind of follow along and then they can use that as well. So looking at this, so when you click on the website link that's on there, it will take you to kind of a landing page. And then from here, you will be able to put in your page information on the left-hand side there. So that will have like the name, you have to put in a category, which you can put up to three different categories. And then you enter your description and then it's as easy and you click create. And then once it's created, then you'll be able to go in and update your bio and your profile picture and your cover photo and all of that. Make sure your cover photo is current. Um, your, you can switch them, it, it doesn't have to be the same, but uh, our pictures do fit one, and no one really realized fit one. Don, Donna, we can't hear you, Donna. Donna, we can't hear anything you're saying. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I was just going to say that your cover photo, it should be current. And this is how we didn't even realize we were looking at the uh, picture district last night and the photo was from 2016. And as lovely as the photo is, it's not very current. So keep an eye on what your, uh, your cover, it's who you are, right? That's the first thing they see. So uh, make sure it's a current photo. <laughs> And I think that's a good thing to bring up to Donna, because I know um, when we were putting together the Picto District WI um, Facebook page, we kind of looked at some different options for the profile picture going, maybe we could use something that resembles something for Nova Scotia, or maybe we could use something that resembles Picto area, and then we finally did land on just kind of a basic text kind of logo in a sense, something that when people look at it, it it's something that they can recognize when we post in the future. So because when it comes up, there's al there's always going to be that profile picture. Like if you're interacting with them, if they're sending them a message or anything like that, that profile picture is always going to be there. And that's how people are going to associate with your organization. So it is important to kind of really look at that. And then, as Donna had said, to pick a cover photo that showcases what the group does and who is in the group as well. Yeah. So then we will look at how to create an Instagram account, which I do want to note that it is very different. There's many different ways that you can set up a Instagram account. So I personally have a Samsung phone. So what I'm going to walk you through is Android whereas Donna would have an iPhone, so the process would look a little bit different for her. And then it would also look different if you did it online. So it's, it's a pretty easy process to create an Instagram account. It's not too, <laughs> not too scary. Um, so I guess the first step is to go into whatever app you have to download apps. So I have Google Play Store. So I would go in and actually download the app. And then once I have it, I would open the app and then click create new account. 
And then once I get there, I would go and I would choose a username and they will tell you, you can see on the presentation, there's a little check mark by the name that I had put in. So it has to be unique. So if somebody already has the name, you'll have to create something a little bit different. And then after that, you would put in a password that you would use to log in. And then once you create that, then you would update your profile picture. And again, it could be the same one if you were to use Facebook, you could use the same one. So then people associate the two as being the same thing. So then it kind of gets into, and I'll, I'll kind of highlight the differences between stories and news feeds. And I do have a couple pictures, but after this, we'll go and actually look at some examples of what they are. So, and I think that'll help people a little bit to visualize it, but at least I'll give you a little bit of an overview of um, what the two of them are. So when you're posting, there does need to be a balance between posts in the news feed and in the stories, just because if an organization, even businesses as well, if they post too often, it can sometimes cause people to unlike or unfollow a page because there's just too much coming at them and they don't want to see something necessarily every day. So when looking at the differences, so you have the news feed, which for the lifetime of the post, your news feed, it's going to be there forever until you actually physically go in and delete it. Whereas in a story, they only last for 24 hours. So after 24 hours, the story is gone and then people can't see it anymore. The placement, so when you go into Facebook or Instagram, the stories are always at the top. And then as you scroll through kind of your timeline, then you have your news feed there. So you see posts from family and friends and other organizations that you follow. For the visibility, um, so I guess that do that kind of covered that, but when you're scrolling through, you can see the news feed. And stories more so work where you click on them and then you can go through each story. So you can either exit out of them or just keep flipping through, kind of like a, a carousel kind of thing where you can keep flipping. So for instance, today I posted on Instagram. Um, the guys were rolling up um, old um, plastic off the silage. So the dog was chasing it and he was barking and it was all kind of silly and light. So I made a video and I put that on my stories. And then I took a picture that the guys were dirty and they were kind of looking like, what am I doing here? So I posted that as a picture to my feed because I wanted that to stay. Whereas the dog being silly, that's just 24 hours gone. And then I'll post a new story. Mm -hmm. So. And then I think one of the, the key things, one of the key differences, so when you post in the news feed, um, it allows for people to engage with the post. So they can like, they can comment, and, uh, and you can share. So in the stories, you cannot share the actual story unless you've been tagged in it. So your news feed allows you to get greater engagement because if you share it, then all of your friends see it and then somebody else might share it. And then the more you share and other people share the post, the more engagement you can get and the more people can see it. Go ahead, Lynn. So why don't you talk a little bit about follow? Why is that important? So when you... So there's like and follow on Facebook, and it kind of 
gets a little tricky there. Um, so if you like or follow a page, then you get the posts in your news feed when you're scrolling through. So if you don't like or follow a page, then you're never going to be able to see what they're posting. And then you won't be able to stay engaged with that group or organization. So I think that's kind of why they I say, follow. Okay. Well, they say the algorithm as well picks up the more engagement there is with your postings, then the algorithm picks up and sends it out more often. So it's, it's another, it keeps you out there. Whereas if nobody comments or likes or does anything, then the algorithm just kind of shoes you away and replaces you with the popular one. Mm -hmm. So. So here is just a picture. So on Facebook, um, the stories would be on the top section. And then on the bottom where you would actually create a post that would go into the news feed and other people would see that in their news feed. And then it's very much the same for Instagram where you have the stories on the top. And then as you scroll through, you have your news feed there. And with Instagram, you can tell it is very much engagement by photos. So a lot of a lot of the times I don't even click to read the descriptions that people put. I just scroll through and look at the, the photos. So if you want to share that information, Facebook is much better for sharing that. And also if you're engaging, especially on Facebook, if um, if I say, oh that looks like a fun time and then you say yeah it's too bad you missed it. And the conversation starts, people will, will read that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then it'd be like, well, why am I not part of that group? So that it adds to it. That's why you really want to get your members engaging, if possible, with whatever you're posting. So I am going to take you through a few examples. So here is the, this is our Picto District WI. Yes, notice it's 2016. <laughs> <laughs> and so here, this would be kind of like the news feed for the page. So we shared something last night. And so we've gotten five likes on it and two shares. And so we put a little write up about what the images kind of are about, and that kind of helps tell your story. So whenever you can kind of put a little something in there, somebody wants to read that to see what goes along with the images. Because if I just look at the images in Facebook, it's a whole different feel. I want to know what's happening, what's going on. Did you have oh, okay. So that's just kind of an example. And then there's different posts that we put through there. And then if I, home. so if I click on the home here, you can see where the stories are at the top. And then you would go through the stories there. And you can post both. And your feed both. Mm -hmm. Some people do that, but it's everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if you look here, this is the news feed. So PEI Women's Institute, they have they hosted the first of their fall workshop series. And so they have a little write-up and then they have some pictures to go along with it to show what they've been up to. And then if we come over here to Instagram, um, you can see here they have, these are saved stories, but it would be very much the same. So you would click on one of them and then you could see them. 
And then as you skip through, you would see new stories. And that's kind of, stories are just a fun way to post more frequently without people feeling like you're posting all the time. Um, and then they have, you can kind of see how Instagram has it set up. So it's more visual based as opposed to the actual written message. And so those are kind of some things that you can consider when you're posting on both of those. Um, do I want to share those? Yeah, I guess I can. It just goes away. So this is the Federated Women's Institute of Canada, and I am not picking on anybody. <laughs> do not feel like I am picking. Um, but one of the things, so where I had mentioned putting a little bit of context around what the post is, like there's a little description here, um, and there's a write up there. But when when you're sharing things, I often find that there is more engagement when you have posts like this than when you just share things onto your page because people don't know why you're sharing that. You know, and you say, "Oh, this is really this is really good. This we want to share this with our members." But if I'm looking at it, I'll be like, okay, this is an online auction. What, what am I supposed to do? What is the Federated Women's Institute of Canada asking me to do? Or what is this about? So just kind of adding a little bit and sharing that story, I think will kind of help with that. And so I'm just thinking. So here is the, I guess Donna always pushes me back to the WI in, in London. <laughs> um, but they, they actually, they do a really good job at getting that kind of action item in there. So here you can see it's like, okay, it's a digital connectivity action pack. Um, and then they have a little write up about it. And then for members to access on my WI, click here. So there's some action for you to do, and it's telling you a little bit of information, and they're letting you know what they would like for me to do. Um, and then they have a lot of engagement on their posts, and they get a lot of shares. So that's another. That is one member um a lot of you people who have been in it for 20 plus years assume we know what you're talking about and we don't so the more information that you can share that you can utilize is to share mm -hmm. um it would be very helpful because we're playing catch up and we have no idea what's happening why it's happening yeah so it's Facebook is really a big opportunity Mm -hmm. to educate as well as mm -hmm. what do I have here I have teach entertain inform and inspire all of those things can be done through Facebook but you, you have to take the time to actually uh, write it out and mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Oh, I can take that on. So if I go back here. So I put together a little slide and it's just very much types of posts. There's other things that you can post, but just to kind of break down some things on maybe what you might like to post in your newsfeed versus your stories. 
Um, so things I put in the news feed, like upcoming meetings, uh, new initiatives that you may have information on resolutions put forward, if you want people to sign up for the newsletter, because it can also be something for your own members as well. Um, and then also membership information for people who may not be aware of WI and how they get involved. And then, oh, oh, I was going to say, you can, you can go to your members as well for pictures. Something's happening in your community. Share that on your Facebook page. If it's just a, a beautiful fall day and you want to showcase your community with the, the leaves changing color, that can go on your page. It's not, it's not strictly business. It has to be interesting and something to kind of catch. If it's just all business, people will soon, they'll just scroll by you, right? Mm -hmm. This doesn't, it's not about me. Whereas you want to catch them. You want to, you want them to stop and look and think, oh, what is a WI? Um, you know, my grandmother went with, this looks kind of fun. They're doing something different. So stuff like that, that goes on your feed. Mm -hmm. So anything that you want to stay there for ever, unless you delete it, you would want it on your newsfeed. And I know for the stories, I put pictures from meetings. Those, as I had showed you, you could also put those on your newsfeed as well and write a little description to say we had a great meeting today and we had this guest speaker in or whatever it is that was done, um, but you can also put additional pictures in your stories if you were just doing something fun and something creative. Um, you could do kind of like a feature, so you could do meet your members, so you could actually have members take pictures or other things like that or answer questions and then showcase that on stories. Um, you could do maybe Donna, because Donna loves to make different recipes. Maybe you would have somebody showing a sandwich that they made for lunch or, or a recipe that had been cooked. It's hard to hear you, Donna. You're cutting in and out. Okay. So, so you, you got to get closer to that mic, I think. So, and then I've got a couple of that was one comment and then they want to know a little bit more as uh, stories are on facebook and they just want you to show again where you would find it so okay um so on your profile it would be right when you log in they're up at the top and it will actually show um It'll show your profile picture where it says create story here. Your profile picture for your personal account will be there. Um, and then you'll probably see some other stories here that people have posted that you can go through. And then if you have a page, it will look similar to this where your page logo would be there. And then there would be different stories that you can click through. Stories are right across the top, mm -hmm. whereas your feed goes up and down, the stories go across okay. Okay. right at the top. Hopefully that answers that, Lynn. Yep. Well, we'll find out. They'll ask again or raise their hand. So. Yeah. Well, you know, if if somebody has any more questions about that, please do. Uh, please let us know. Or unmute yourself and ask the question. I think yeah. they'd be quite happy for you to do that. So that works too. Whatever works for us. I guess the, the main thing here, right at this point in time, is really telling the WI. So anything that that you do, um, if you make a donation, if your group does anything, whatever it is that you do as a group, put it on there. Let people know, because this is right now, this is what's happening. People don't know anything about the WI. So when they, when you start posting how much fun you're having, <laughs> what you're learning, um, who you're meeting, and it goes on. I'm really social. I have no problem with any of this. 
Some people don't want their picture on there. Mm -hmm. Always be considerate. If you're taking, if you're doing a, a picture at an event where you can't ask people, don't worry about it, post it. But if you are taking pictures of fellow members, always ask, make sure they're okay with you posting their picture. But most people are, mm -hmm. most people really are. Or if you have someone in your group who's like me, I mean, I would go around and take pictures of everybody and consider it fun. I mean, maybe you have someone in, you know, a member who would do that. So there's, there's options. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a question. Hanya's got a question. Yep. You know, on you unmute yourself there, Hanya, first. So please. Um, if I can give an example, I, oh, oh. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes. If I can give an example, um, this is a year, a year and a half ago when COVID was still pretty rampant and there was, uh, and everything was locked down and we weren't following up with WI meetings. Um, some, somebody posted on Facebook that we should put goofy hats on and ourselves with goofy, with goofy hats. And I had a really goofy hat, um, which I posted a picture of myself on. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a few comments from, um, from WI friends. But then um, another friend said, wow, you what kind of group is doing this? And she's a little bit shy about mm. being taken to a WI meeting. She lives in the Ottawa area and I haven't been to the Ottawa area yet, but um, maybe maybe next um, next year, uh, whenever whenever I go down to Ottawa, I will try to connect her with a WI group. So that's still in the works, but that's how you attract members. Or if she hears about the WI from somebody else, she might think, well, my my friend Hanya um, um, is into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, there's options too. Perhaps, you know, if she doesn't want to go to meetings, maybe if your club did uh, Zoom, every fourth meeting was a Zoom meeting since we've all become familiar with Zoom. Mm -hmm. Or you could use Zoom. Um, I think it was one of the PEI branches. They do um, like a cooking class on Zoom. People sign up for. I mean, it, social media can be used in so many ways. But it really can. If it, it can be our friend if we allow it. I do think it's also a, a, a good thing to mention, as you said, maybe somebody might be a little shy to come out to a meeting, but if we almost make it so it's like everybody brings a friend, then maybe more people would feel comfortable going out with somebody to be like, okay, I'll give it a try because I know other people are are going to be bringing a friend and there's going to be more people in that situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's it's great that you had posted that and then other people were like, that looks like fun. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. that's, that's what you want. So it's perfect. Yeah. And for some of those folks that are into, into education, and uh, resolutions, it's also an opportunity to post the resolutions, you know, as you're cre creating them, take a picture and said, this is what we did tonight, was that we created a resolution about, you know, on food safety or food security or um, the diabetes pumps, um, insulin pumps, that's the ones that we did in Pictor County in Nova Scotia this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think, so you have to be cognizant that different things are going to attract different people. Mm -hmm. So it's not all you don't always want to be posting the same thing. You want to be doing a variety of things to show the variety that we have in our organization. That's one thing that you really have to be aware of. You're not posting for you. Mm -hmm. You're posting for your branch and all of the different interests within the branch. 
have to be catered to as well, right? Remember, this is not your page where you post what you want. You have to post for your branch or your district or whoever, represent everyone. They also have to give you the stuff to post. It's a good way here. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we have some teasers. Oh, gosh. Part of me is like, I hope I did this right, Lynn. <laughs> You'll have to let me know if you can hear it. So, Donna, uh, Donna put this together. Good. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. I'm just happy to be here. Still, I know the world's on fire. The situation's dire. A lot of work occurs. It's gonna be required. But I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. So, do you want to talk to that, that was thrown together pretty quickly. Could have been done much better. Um, but we were kind of thinking that maybe this is something you guys could all start with. Mm -hmm. And everyone could, and you, it doesn't have to be a video, it can be a collage of pictures on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, but just give everybody a whiteboard that I got at the dollar store. And what does WI mean to you? And have them write on it and uh, make that your first uh, uh, Facebook picture. Mm -hmm. Or you can do a video, make it your first video. They say that people are more apt to watch video than look at a picture. I don't know if that's true, but I've heard that. So anyway, see what you come up with. Well, you are the one that's on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess people do like watching people videos. People do like watching videos. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah. So kind of what Donna had mentioned. Play it again. And music, is, everything is there on Facebook for you to access. Like you can get music on Facebook. Um, uh, can you edit? Uh, yeah, you can a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to use my Instagram and I edit on Instagram and mm -hmm. then post to uh, Facebook. But, uh, it, it really is. It's one of those things that you kind of just have to play around with it. You really can't break it. Yeah. But you problem. have to you have to play around with it just to kind of throw things together and be like, that worked. That did not work. Play with it until you actually hit that post button. It doesn't go. It doesn't anywhere. go anywhere. <laughs> so you you can make a big mistake and go back and say I don't like that picture. I'm going to do something else. I'm adding this. However, yeah. you, until you hit post, mm -hmm. it's still yours. Mm -hmm. And so this was so the pictures. There were some pictures. So I took those pictures and I made a little collage. So it could be as simple as this where you take just pictures of people and put it together. Um, but it shows a good, a good diverse group. And then people can kind of see who some of your members are. And then if somebody is like, hey, I know Lynn, or hey, I know Donna, or I know Eleanor, then people kind of associate you with the organization. And it gives them a familiar face to not feel as maybe shy or worried about coming out to an event or a meeting. So I think that's also a, a yeah. good thing. Um, Question? Yep. How do you get, um, from Sheila, how do you get music on Facebook? And Donna, if you're going to speak, you need to get closer to that mic because we're losing some of what you're saying. So, and it's really good, so. Um. I would actually have to go digging to figure out how to get music on Facebook. I know it's possible. It's not difficult. It's just uh, a button. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I haven't done it that way. I tend to just put pictures or uh, a video with an original sound on Facebook. And on Instagram, 
um, in the edit program, music, one of the choices is music. And uh, my Instagram account and my TikTok account, I use music a lot in those and I, I don't tend to with Facebook. So how do you get it on TikTok and, and Instagram then? Is there, it's just a button that you choose to get a yeah. certain music or? Yeah, and it's, it's usually a musical symbol, mm -hmm. like the, you know, the musical symbol. Yeah, so like a note. A note, a note, <laughs> I guess, yeah. Would be the, um, what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So just go in and, and play. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert either, and that's all <laughs> I've been doing. You just go in and fumble. Like I said, until you actually get post, no one sees it but you. Mm -hmm. So when I, if I put together, my TikToks are usually about 10 seconds long, and I can spend a half an hour going through music till I find a song that I think represents my video, and I'll try 10 different songs. So, yeah, and, and it's until I actually find what I like and hit post, it's nobody sees it. The same with Instagram and Facebook. So just go in and play. Um, like I said, I do most of my editing. Instagram is where I really like, and I do my editing in there. But uh, yeah, but the, the, look for the, the note, the musical note and hit on that, or it'll say add music or there it's quite, it's there, yeah. You may not have a great choice of music, but each each um, platform has different uh, rights to different songs. So you may be looking for a particular song and you can't get it, or maybe you can get it on TikTok, but you can't get it on Facebook. Or so they don't all have the same choice, but they all have music. Can you show an example of that, Monica? Because you had some Instagram ones there is there anything there that had the music had the note there so people could see just for fun okay so that's it. I don't, I don't think because so this is where it gets a little complex when you're working with instagram um it's better to create it on your phone if you can, because there's limitations to the online version because they at first created it just for your phone. Um, so the functionality isn't always there. I'm just trying to think. Um, And again, I think I would say there's limitations on this as well. Yeah, most everything is done with your phone. <laughs> A lot of it is done with your phone. Yeah. Okay. So if if you're making posts and stuff like that, your phone or tablet um, would be the best option to create content that you're going to be putting up on there where I find if you're just creating a post, like this is fine, because you can easily just create a post that would go on here, no problem. You just click on here and you can add photos and stuff like that, but you can't add music on here. That would just be what? on your story. On three buttons on this Actually, just one second. But yeah, I would, okay. if anybody has any specific questions, um, you can always just get in contact with Lynn and Lynn can connect us. <laughs> and then I can certainly help with that. Um, but yeah, I can't show you on here. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. It's worth a shot. It was, I was like, oh, I might be able to do that, but yes, there was. So I kind of went through some examples. One, there's, so there's also the New Brunswick Women's Institute and they also do a really 
good job on theirs and they have a lot of engagement. So they're a great, great resource. And I always, I just encourage people to just go and check out other pages to see yeah. what they're doing. Follow, you should follow some of the other, um, get a feel for them, follow some of the other Facebook pages from some of like the New Brunswick Women's Institute, the PEI. Um, no, I can't think off the top of my head what we have here. Um, FWIC. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and get an idea of what it is they're doing and posting and mm -hmm. yeah. We all, we need, it, it changes, right? It, it's, it evolves, <laughs> but you really want to engage your audience. You can even put up something, ask a question. Um, you know, like, what's your favorite ice cream? And then get people will, you're getting them interested and they want something to do, something to amuse them, something. I mean, you wouldn't do that often, but you could do something like that to engage. What's your favorite WI activity? Mm -hmm. Or what's, you know, it, it could be anything. Just something that'll engage them, that will make them stop, look at your page, and think about the WI. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another question, how often do you suggest that you post on your Facebook page to keep it current? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would I would say that's it's a tricky thing. It's a it's a tricky answer. Um, it's one of those things you want to post enough. Like I mean, even if you just start it, like I always tell people, if you just start with two posts a month, like that's a start. And then if you want to go to one post a week, then that's great. Like if you start getting posts every single day, um, it becomes too much and you just wanna make sure you're spacing them out so that people once a week are still kind of engaged with what you're doing, but you're not giving them too much that they don't wanna see something from you. So it's one of those things you kind of have to, to test it out and actually see how much time you have to dedicate to it because it is a lot of work to do social media. And especially if you start adding more than one platform, it becomes quite a bit, especially for someone who's volunteering. So you just kind of have to be mindful of that. And yeah, I just say, just try and space them out. And if, like, if, if there was ever a week that there was three things happening, it's okay to post those three things because they are very meaningful things that the organization is doing. It's just, you don't want to be just posting something. Just, yeah, to post. just to post. People, people scroll by it after a while. They don't even look. They just, oh yeah, another, like, they don't. And make sure you post good pictures. Mm -hmm. There is nothing worse than having somebody post 50 pictures and a Thumb is across one, or they're blurry, or they're like, don't don't do that. <laughs> make it make it one or two good pictures mm -hmm. that are uh, yeah. Like we don't need fifty or ten. Mm -hmm. Two is probably at one time sufficient. Mm -hmm. And if you did that, whenever something, yeah, if it's current, if it's relevant, mm -hmm. and in the meantime you can post the odd meme, but don't. Don't post many of those because people really do grow tired and then they just scroll by it. They don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if we go back to FWIC um, and we had posted this, um, and I, Ruth Thomas has a question here. So I just, yeah. so we posted the online auction. So should we have put also included in there the purpose of this auction? I, I would say we should have had a few lines to say this is a major fundraiser, the first time we've done it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. And then, had a, like, I know the link is down below. Yes. But sometimes people don't, like, they, they can't find it. Yep. So you almost have to put it in there so at the top just to be like, 
here, here is what this is all about, and here's the link to access it. Even though it's below, sometimes it's just, if it's all there, then somebody is probably more likely to click on it. Okay. And go to it, and as opposed to just sharing something. You have seconds to grab someone's attention. Seconds, like three to five seconds tops. So the, if they're not going to, if it doesn't catch them right away, if the information, if they have to go digging, chances are they won't. You have like five seconds tops. Okay. So we have two questions. Oh, we're going to let Ruth Thomas go first because she's got her hand up. And then I have another question for you when you're, after you get Ruth handled. Ruth, go ahead, dear. Okay, uh, thanks. I figured it would be too hard to type this all out. That's okay. <laughs> so if my district decided, let's get a Facebook page mm -hmm. and we start one up and we put a few pictures on, how, how do we get people to see us? It's just like by chance that they, oh, here's, I, I live near here. Mm -hmm. What's this all about? That they're gonna look at it and then, well, yeah, you know, because what, what I mean, so you have to start. Your members have to engage, mm -hmm. and then people will. It has to have something of interest, and that's what I said. Just don't put any picture up. Don't you know? Like a make it a good one. Make it something that people are going to stop and say, hey, "What's that?" or Who's that? Or right, make make it something that catches them. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how it comes across their screen all of a sudden. Like I know my own Facebook does because I've got my friends, and then mm -hmm. they post things, and I look at it, and I say like or whatever comment. But if this is a whole new yeah. Facebook page, and it's our district. So and how guess, does it get rolling? So I guess one thing I would say is, so you would have members in your branch. Um, and if you started a page, the first thing would, you would initially have to put some posts out there so that there's actually activity on the page. Um, but if you get all of your members to share some of the posts, then their friends will also see that. And if they share it and then encourage some of their friends to follow the page, then that's kind of how you start organically to start to pick up people to follow or like the page. And then once you kind of build that and then you start building momentum and people are more engaged or liking the posts or sharing more, then you will eventually build. And then once people start to know about your story and what the WI is and what you do, then like I know the post that we had shared, I shared it on my personal account. And I actually had somebody this evening message me and say, hey, are you part of the WI? I'd like to chat with you. So those things, they kind of just happen organically but you have to start sharing your story and you have to start telling people what it is you do. And then once that kind of happens, then your, your followers will start to grow and then you won't have to push that out as much. Maybe this type of social media will work better than just having a web page. Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay. This is, yeah. this is about finding new members. This is about telling the world who we are. So when you do start, you're probably only going to have as many members as your branch has, as many friends as your branch has. So that's the whole idea is to grow, is to use Facebook to grow your branch. And that will grow your, your Facebook mm -hmm. numbers, right? So one feeds the other. But this is what it's about. It's, it's about showing who we are and once you get your branch members to start sharing it with their friends and hopefully you'll get some new members and so forth so forth mm -hmm. okay thank you you're welcome so what there's two questions here i think that are linked and we probably handled this one it was about 
do we need to establish friends? But as, as Karen is saying, and from Saskatchewan is saying, if you click on the post, the admin of the page can invite them to like and follow the page. The administrator gets involved in that, right? So, mm -hmm. so you can like, you can hit the page and then whoever's responsible for it, they can invite them to follow and be a part yes. of that page, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think Candy, that's the answer to your question is how you would, you would like it um and asked to follow it and then it, you would get connected on and then we need to spread that message over and over and over again am i right yeah mm -hmm. yes okay. Yeah. okay sue's got sue cushing's got a question for us or I, I don't have a question i just want to tell you what happened um three weeks ago we started a facebook page for our little belmont um wi here in havelock ontario and we were down to four members and uh, we're getting older but we want to do something to maybe get the word out to the local community and we really do like to give back like all of us do so we started this uh facebook page some of you on here tonight have have seen it um two things have happened we've got three possible new members coming to our next meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also are selling quilt tickets uh, for a, a quilt challenge that we had for our, our 125th. And, and I sold 10 tickets because of this new little website. So it's amazing what can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's not a website, sorry, it's a Facebook page. What, what is your um, eight? What's your group? My, we're Belmont. Women's Institute. And Belmont. please join us. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I thanks for your hints tonight because we're going to make it a lot better. Thank you. Perfect. Did you have a question, Lynn? I think we answered that question, okay. Monica. I believe so. Um okay. I think we're good. So uh, Sue also said that she loves the New Brunswick WI Facebook page and she's going to follow it. So thank you for that. And I think that's one of the messages is to go out there and see, you know, look across the country at all the various uh, Facebook pages. I know Manitoba has a good one. We talked about, uh, we've talked, um, uh, uh, FWI, all you guys are always uh, pushing stuff through there. Um, mm -hmm. So if we start connecting and following each other, we will find all kinds of good ideas and, you know, mm -hmm. for ourselves, but I think it will help encourage us that there are new members. And that's a great story, Sue. Thank you. Yeah. And that's the mm -hmm. point. The other point about the Facebook page is that that might not give them all the answers, but if there is a website that there is that they can push back to, then they can go and find more information about it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's when you're talking to individuals and we've already looked at the stats and that next generation below us, most of us are on here tonight are baby boomers, um, but the generation below us, what was it, 74 percent think faith, social media is the essential part of their lives. So we want to talk to them or connect with them. That's where we have to be so we can make the invite and ask them to go to a Facebook page, whether it's a provincial, a district, or a branch one, uh, the mm -hmm. national one, whatever, and say, then they might see some things there that they like, and that will reinforce them about mm -hmm. the idea of coming and wanting to be a part of it. So you still need that invite. I think, I think things go, I don't think um, social media is not going to be, the, it's not the magic wand, mm -hmm. but it's another tool in our chest to, in order to encourage members to join and it will help us reach that next generation. So I guess there will be some other points to make, so. Yeah, and I think kind of through your story, um, it relates back to when, when we first started the presentation and staying connected, it's not only just staying connected with your branch, it's staying connected with other WI branches. And then that also helps build community there when you're connected with everyone and you can see what they're doing and see their impact and be like, you know, we're going to steal that idea. Yeah, yeah you can so, feed off each other. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's wonderful. So I guess um, kind of looking at next steps. So why wi the video that donna had put together so if 
you are interested in kind of trying something like that, it doesn't necessarily have to be a video, it could just be some pictures, um, then you can email those to Lynn, and then we can also share those. Um, and also just saying like, hey, I posted this, um, check it out, then other WI uh, branches can also share those things as well on their stories and be like, check out what's happening in Manitoba and check out what's happening in New Brunswick and in Belmont. And so different things like that. It's, it's just a way to stay connected with people and to be sharing those stories and why the organization is so important. And then again, like and share <laughs> on yeah. social media. Those are really the big, the big keys and have fun, be respectful and be considerate of others around you. And then I think I had recommendations, but I think Donna, you've kind of- Was I you've ahead kinda, of the game? Yeah, you were <laughs> ahead of the game, but that's okay. Well, here's um, like social media platforms i uh, wouldn't a max i i would just do one yeah just one is okay one is okay but definitely a maximum of two <laughs> i i do three right? oh, well. oh, it's a lot mm -hmm. yeah and in canada we don't get paid for any of it so it's like a full-time job for nothing mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, i um i would stick with facebook Number one and Instagram second and YouTube third would be, and I wouldn't even go to YouTube if you have no experience with any other social media. Perhaps YouTube would be the last you would go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I yeah. My recommendation would be you you could use um a group, but I would recommend the page if possible because it does give you that consistent messaging um, to people and it gives them a trusted organization that they can see posting. Um, and like I say, you don't need to post every day to keep your followers engaged. I would, what, what, I, what I was telling you earlier, um, quality over quantity. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. definitely. <laughs> so as long as it's impactful, and it's something that's going to resonate with your audience. I would definitely kind of focus on those. That I would post less and make them more impactful. And, and remember who your audience is. Mm -hmm. So don't post something that just for seniors. Don't post all information for seniors mm -hmm. or, or teenagers because they're not who you're trying to attract. Mm -hmm. So make sure you post things for that age group that, uh, that you want to be your new members. Make sure you know your audience. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the last one, Donna, you had kind of touched on it, but just make sure you do get permission from people before you post, because that is important. You don't want somebody to come back and be like, I don't want that up there, please take it down. Um, I mean, you can always take it down, that's yes. possible. Yeah. But it's better to ask before just because some people aren't comfortable being on social media. So, but again, at the end of the day, <laughs> if it is your page, and whoever you have looking after your page, they can't, like, don't let somebody tell you how to run it. Mm -hmm. It's your page. So, if somebody says, if one member says, Oh, I hate all of those recipes. Don't do that anymore. No. If you're getting 50 likes on your recipes, continue. Mm -hmm. Don't like work your audience. You will know after you do it for a couple of months, you will start to see mm -hmm. who's watching. Mm -hmm. And I guess the thing is, is it may be good if, if you're trying new things, if you're trying new posts and you're not getting any engagement then maybe you go, okay, what could we do differently? Or then you try something new. And if that doesn't work, then maybe you kind of have a group of people that come together to say, okay, or what we're posting isn't necessarily working. So maybe it's a conversation with another branch that is having success to say, what, what are you doing that we aren't doing? Um, 
And like I say, the more you communicate with other branches and see what they're posting and see what's getting good engagement, uh, there's no sense kind of everybody trying to do the same thing themselves where maybe a branch is already doing this really well. So how can we kind of duplicate what they're doing in our area to share with people here? So, cause you don't want to yeah. make it too much work. I put up a, a TikTok yesterday and uh, it was of geese and I thought it was beautiful. And I had 300 people view it. And then I put up a video of my husband scrapping a cow behind the ear and it was at 42,000 views when I checked it. <laughs> I mean, really, when it, it, it's hitting this, <laughs> it really is. Mm -hmm. So just, just keep, keep trying. Going. Yeah. Just keep going. So I guess that's the end of our uh, formal presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Monica and Donna. Um, is there anybody else have any other questions? You can unmute yourself and uh, let Hanya. Um, about geese, I want um, <laughs> one of my high school friends posted this gorgeous post, and I saw that post before. How geese, when they fly, they are um, they are a team, and how they care about each other. Has mm -hmm. anybody else seen this? Mm -hmm. so, unfortunately. I couldn't share it. It was one of those that he shared from somebody and I couldn't send, but I I would have loved to have shared that with um, the FWIO page and the Silverwood, our Silverwood branch page, because that's, that's how we should be thinking too, but. <sighs> like these, everybody thinks of her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Hanya. Angela? Um, I think this has been a great presentation. I have never seen a TikTok. Is there any way of you showing one? <laughs> um, to my... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. If you, if you uh, Google TikTok, Mrs. Brown's voice, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. There's, there's some farmers out of the, out of the states that do some singing that's pretty good too. Yeah, so. that can be quite entertaining. It really mm -hmm. can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some gorgeous music. If you have a favorite composer or orchestra or singer, um, you can Google TikTok mm -hmm. and their name, and you can find what they've done and, and listen to them. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I understand it's very addictive, Angela. So just so you're forewarned, exactly. once you get started on that, down that road, it, from my understanding is, it's okay. hard to stop so looking good. at them. <laughs> yeah. Any other okay. questions Thanks. or comments? That you're welcome, Angela, thank you. Any other comments, questions? We will post this to YouTube. Uh, we, FWIC does have um, a YouTube channel. Uh, so we will post tonight's video recording to that. Um, and I have the PDF that Monica made. So I can email that out to folks. That's what you Lynn. want to do? Who's yeah. asking? Yeah. Lynn, don't forget the upcoming events. Oh, I won't forget those. So anyways. <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Miriam. So, so. Lynn, I would just like to, to uh, thank the Outreach and Communications Committee, which consists of Lynn, Angela, Eleanor, and a whole bunch of other people for doing this. And to Monica and Donna, this was great. And I think you're going to have a lot of reaction and a lot of um, Facebook followers coming up. So thanks a lot for all that. Great job. Wonderful. Good. Thank you, Margaret. Both, both these gals are really good on social media. And uh, we're so glad to have them as part of our branch here in northeastern Nova Scotia. So they've, they've made a difference for us as well. So anyway, if there isn't anything else this evening, um, we will bring the evening to an end. And again, thank you very much for joining us.